So let's take a quick tour around our patient rooms. So the patient rooms here at the urgent care are pretty standard. We've got gloves. In our drawers, we keep some of the materials for wound care like bacitracin, alcohol swabs, gauze, bandages, and tape. Here's our exam table, sharps container, a computer that no one really uses the computers that are in patient rooms, blood pressure cuff, which I use for my manual blood pressures, and then my assessment tools here. My next patient came in with a laceration to her right hand. She was nice enough to let me take a picture before I got started with the suturing. about corneal abrasions. I see a lot of patients that come into the urgent care with this complaint and so I wanted to talk to you about it. The typical presentation for a patient with a corneal abrasion is eye pain and a foreign body sensation. So they typically come into the clinic saying, I think I scratched my eye, I'm having this pain, help me. <laughs> if possible, you wanna do a visual acuity test um, but sometimes the patient is in, um, is in a lot of pain and it's just totally uncomfortable for them. Let's get to the good part, which is the fluorescein exam. So this is a woods lamp. This is what's going to produce the blue light that's gonna help you visualize the corneal abrasion. So there's the power button. That's what you're gonna flip in order to turn the light on. First you need to plug it in and then you could turn the lights out and then hold it up to the patient's eye. So typically treatment for a small uncomplicated corneal abrasion is a topical antibiotic therapy and sometimes pain medication as well if it's necessary. Most abrasions fully heal usually within about 24 to 48 hours. So at my particular urgent care, the MAs carry out the splinting. I direct them on what particular kind of splint that I need and then they carry out the task. I do come into the room if they need some extra guidance and we just work together. Okay, so I just had a patient come in with hiccups for the past 48 hours and he hasn't really tried anything at home. I think he told me he took a sip of some cold water or something like that, but aside from that, nothing. I had him take a teaspoon of granulated sugar. I just so happen to have some in the break room here at my job. So I had him swallow that. I had him drink really cold water because I can't imagine how difficult that was to swallow. <laughs> um, and then I had him hold his knees to his chest for one minute. I had him do those things and the hiccups went away. And then I did send him with a prescription for um, baclofen. He's gonna take it every night for the next um, two weeks. 
she's already on a PPI, which he takes daily. So, and I told him if the hiccups return, then to give us a call. So hopefully that works and hopefully I will not see him back returning with hiccups. <laughs> So this is our procedure room. I like this room because it has plenty of space and it has better lighting. So I take patients here to do all my suturing, to do EKGs, and sometimes I'll take patients in this room uh, for wound care as well. So I've got all my sterile tools, I've got all my suturing materials in here, I've got my sterile saline for wound irrigation, I've got iodine, pretty much everything that I need to do any kind of wound care or any kind of hands-on procedure. So I really like this room and it's really close by. So I had a patient walk into the door asking for his tonsil stones removed. I've never removed a tonsil stone in my life. <laughs> and the ideal tools that would be used for something like this, we did not have in our office. So I had to get creative. So I use one of our ear curettes. And when I tell you, I used this in a scooping motion and it worked like a freaking charm. I got all of the tonsil stones out and it was magical and the patient was really happy when he walked out the door and it made me happy. So now I am officially an expert on removing tonsil stones. <laughs> The last 10 minutes are the time that I take to make sure that I completed all of my charting. These last 10 minutes are usually the most painful because there is no guarantee at the urgent care that a patient is not gonna walk in at the last minute. So <laughs> we're all kind of biting our nails until it hits eight o'clock and we lock the doors and get out of there. But on this particular day, nobody came at the last minute and we were able to clock out at eight o'clock. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in my next video.